हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम इन योर फिजिक्स क्लास फॉर कंप्लीट कोर्स प्रेस सब्सक्राइब बटन एंड बेल आइकॉन एंड वॉच अवर वीडियोस रेगुलरली फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी विल लर्न एवरीथिंग अबाउट सिंपल पेंडुलम लेट्स स्टार्ट विद आइडियल सिंपल पेंडुलम अ सिस्टम कंसिस्ट ऑफ हैवी पार्टिकल सस्पेंडेड बाय अ मासलेस इनएक्सटेंसिबल एंड फ्लेक्सिबल स्ट्रिंग फ्रॉम रिजिड सपोर्ट is called ideal simple pendulum practically it is impossible to achieve such pendulum due to this hypothetical concept like massless string and heavy particle in order to have its practical application we'll replace a heavy particle by heavy dense sphere called bob and instead of massless string we take light string with negligible mass so friends ise kehte hain practical simple pendulum a practical simple pendulum is a small heavy sphere suspended by a light and inextensible string from a rigid support the distance between the point of suspension and the center of gravity of the bob is called length of the pendulum let m be the mass of the bob and t dash be the tension in the string friends yahan tension ko t ke bajaye t dash se show karne ka maqsad hai ki aage period of pendulum ko hame t se show karna hai friends weight of the bob acts vertically downward and tension in the string acts vertically upward and that is why the balance each other and net effect on the bob becomes zero hence this position is called equilibrium position or mean position at this position tension in the string and weight of the bob are collinear vectors if the bob is displaced from its mean position by some angular displacement then then weight and tension would no longer be collinear arthat ek line mein nahi rahenge isiliye hame weight mg ko uske rectangular components mein resolve karna hoga ab now instead of weight we have taken their component therefore main yahan se weight ko hata deta hu now the picture is very clear so tension is balanced by mg cos theta hence it is not responsible to start the or stop the motion thus tension plays no role in this motion but the unbalanced force directed toward the mean position will be the cause of its motion remember in oscillatory motion any real force directed towards mean position is called restoring force hence mg cos theta is restoring force so f equal to minus mg sin theta which is responsible for oscillatory motion now we will prove motion of the bob is a linear simple harmonic motion to start the proof let's start with theory consider a simple pendulum of mass m and length l as shown on screen the various forces acting on the bob are the weight of the bob which is always directed vertically downward and tension which acts along the string and directed towards point of suspension when the bob makes some angular displacement theta then its weight is dissolved into two components number 1 mg cos theta which balances tension in the string and second is mg sin theta which is unbalanced force this unbalanced force provides restoring force hence can be written as f equals minus mg sin theta by vector conventions this force is taken negative 
or linear SHM, theta must be very small, that is less than 10 degree. Now, the question is why less than 10 degree? Let me clear it. Observe this table carefully. If theta equals to 20 degree, error in measurement of time period is 2%. For theta equals 45 degree, error is 4% and increases further with increase in angular amplitude theta. Small angular displacement theta ensures straight line path for oscillations. Hence, theta should be as small as possible. Ok, let's move back to our probe. For small angle theta, value of sine theta is nearly equal to theta. That is, sine theta is approximately equal to theta. Hence, modifying equation of force as f equals minus mg theta. Here, we have replaced sine theta by theta due to the fact that theta is very very small. Clear? So, this is equation number 1. According to second law of motion, force is a product of mass and acceleration. And by definition of angle, angle is equal to arc length upon radius. Here, arc length is taken as x and the radius equal to the length of pendulum. Hence, theta is x by L. So, substituting these values in equation 1, we get ma equals minus mg times x by L. Cancelling like terms from both sides, we get a equals minus g by L times x. This is equation number 2. As g and L are constant, hence acceleration is directly proportional to negative of displacement. This is necessary condition for linear SHM. This statement proves that motion of the bob is linear SHM. Dosto proof to yehi pe khatam ho gaya, par period of simple pendulum ka derivation abhi baaki hai. Let's go to derivation of simple pendulum. Before that, let us recall the definition of period of simple pendulum. The time interval required to complete one oscillation of a bob is called time period of simple pendulum. Dosto, yadi aapko ye question aya, to equation 2 tak aapko same answer likhna hai. Aur uske baad, aapko usi equation se aake badna hai. Consider second equation. In linear SHM, the acceleration of the body is given by minus omega square x. Since both equation gives acceleration of a particle performing linear SHM, so they must be equal. So, we get now cancelling like terms from both sides and we get omega square equal to g by l. Taking square root, we get the value of omega. We know that the value of omega is nothing but 2 pi by t. On simplifying, we get equation for time period of simple pendulum, which is equal to t equals 2 pi under root of l by g. This is the expression of time period of simple pendulum. Dosto, yadi aapko frequency of simple pendulum pucha, to n equal to 1 upon t is formula mein ye value substitute karna. To aapko frequency of simple pendulum milega n equals 1 upon 2 pi under root g by l. To yahaan ye nahi pucha, to yahaan likhne ki jorat nahi hai. Lekin yadi question iska pucha, to aap is tarah se lik sakte hai. This is the expression for time period of simple pendulum. It shows that time period of pendulum depends on number 1. Length of pendulum. If the length of simple pendulum is increased, its period of oscillations will increase as t is directly proportional to under root of L. And number 2. Acceleration due to gravity at that place. 
t is inversely proportional to square root of acceleration due to gravity time period does not depend on amplitude of oscillation if the amplitude of oscillation is 10 cm and time period is 2 second then this 2 second time period will be same even if the amplitude of oscillation is doubled or tripled second point it does not depend on mass of the bob okay if the pendulum has a time period of 1 second then if its mass is doubled tripled or many folds then also its period will remain as 1 second that means remains unaffected A simple pendulum with time period of 2 seconds is called seconds pendulum. Let's calculate its length using t equals 2 pi under root of L upon g. Because basically seconds pendulum is a simple pendulum. For seconds pendulum we have t equals 2 seconds. Substituting this value in above formula we get 2 equals 2 pi under root of L by G. Now cancelling two from both sides and simplifying this, we get L equals G upon pi square. On substituting values of G and pi in this equation, we obtain the value of length of seconds pendulum. The seconds pendulum can be used to determine the value of acceleration due to gravity if the length is known.